broadcasting to you locally, wherever you are in the nation. This is Radioactive. Welcome to the Mike Stan Show. My name's... Mike Stan. And a very special show for you tonight, as you've no doubt heard. But first of all, we have got to go over to Scotland Yard for tonight's police file with Pamela Johnson. Hi, Pam. Hi, Mike. Uh, well... <clears throat> Police have tonight issued a description of a man known to have been involved in a bank robbery in Croydon last month. Uh, he's tall, slim, dark hair, blue eyes, an upturned nose, greying sideboards, a small scar on his left forefinger, an inside leg measurement of 34 inches, and a cap two, three from the back on the left-hand lower jaw. Uh, his name is Jack Bronson. He lives at number three, Eastern Way, Guildford, <laughs> with his wife and two children. Phone number, Guildford 58694. Uh, anyone who knows anything about this man, uh, or has any knowledge, of his whereabouts uh, should have no worries at all as he was arrested this morning and is now in police custody. Back to you, Mike. Thanks, Pam. She'll be back at the same time tomorrow night, but right now on Radioactive, it's time for... Shipping forecast with Mike Cody. <laughs> Every night about this time, we link up with Mike on board our weather ship, more just a few miles out to sea. And, um, hello, Mike. We understand you're experiencing some pretty turbulent weather out there. Hello, Mike. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike? Well, it looks as like if the weather might be causing one or two technical problems there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, short circuits, broken cables, that sort of thing. <laughs> Well, perhaps we'd better just leave Mike just now. Our doubt is just putting the final touches to the shipping forecast. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back to him very shortly. In the meantime, let's take a break. Hello, Mary. Hello, June. <laughs> How was your holiday, Mary? Oh, it was lovely, June. <laughs> but there was so much food, I put on lots of weight. Why is that, Mary? Because I ate too much, June. <laughs> oh, yes. You want to try Slimbo. Slimbo? Yes. Slimbo tablets cut down your appetite in a safe and medically controlled way. How do you know all that, June? It says it on the packet. <laughs> Slimbo, when you really need to slim. Well, you finally got your man, Mary. Yes, June. Thanks to Slimbo, eh, Mary? What? Thanks to Slimbo. No, he got me up the spout and Dad threatened to beat him up. <laughs> Hello, honest Ron here with exciting news about my brand new money-saving airline. Yes, other airlines may be able to offer you luxuries such as champagne, in-flight movies and seats, but... We at Honest Ron's Airways will provide you with a flight you can afford. For just 75p, you can step on a plane at Luton and within 24 hours, step off again at Gatwick. <laughs> and, and, and our safety record is second to none. How many crushes have we had since we started, eh? Correct. 25. Well, every company experiences teething troubles in the first week. Yes, uh, it'll be a flight you'll never forget from the time your knuckles turn white to the moment you regain consciousness. Fly me and you'll never want to fly with anybody else. Honest Ron, honest Ron, the others are a con. Honest. Hello, Mike Channel here on Radioactive, Britain's first national local radio station. It's uh, 19 minutes past exactly here on Radioactive, and uh, I'll be with you throughout the night, bringing you traffic reports, uh, time checks, music, time checks, the usual competitions and phone-ins, uh, time checks, and a host of other great features uh, and time checks. And right away, uh, with the time at 19 minutes past, here's our first request of the evening, and it comes from Zoe of Maidenhead. Uh, she asks us to say hi to Trevor. She says she's sorry, Trevor, and hopes you're still able to cycle. <laughs> Good luck with the op, she says, and see you soon in court. <laughs> so, uh, here we are, Zoe, the record you asked for. Undoubtedly two of the most popular Cockney singers around, a duo that needs no introduction. It's 19 minutes past. <laughs> We're from the east of London. We've lived here all our life. Every night from the list and your rubber duck to get away from the trouble and strife. Two tons of eels and jelly Twenty gallons of stouts That's what we shove down our belly And later on that's what comes out Richard! You 
Hello, Mike Channel here, and right now on Radio It's Lascivia who works here in Radioactive's shop downstairs in the foyer. Hi, Lascivia, what are some of the bargains on offer down there currently? Hello, Mike. Well, I'm here to tell you about one or two of the bargains on offer down here in the Radioactive foyer currently. Yes, what are they? And let me tell you what they are. <laughs> yes, what are they? Well, Mike, have we got some bargains for you? Sorry? Uh, have we got some bargains for you? Ah. Yes, indeed, Mike, that's right. Let me see now. Our most popular, I suppose, is still the radioactive T-shirt. And how much are they? Let me tell you how much they are. <laughs> Yes, how much are they? Good question, Mike. They're just two fifty. however large you may... however large you may be. And uh, what sizes do they come in? And in case you're wondering what sizes they come in... <laughs> well, we have them in small, medium, large or extra large. In case any of you are carrying a little excess baggage. And the extra large size are for any of those of you carrying a little excess baggage. <laughs> oh, well, thanks very much, Lucivia. Bye, Mike. Uh, bye, Lucivia. Thank you. Good. <laughs> and look ahead to tomorrow night on Radioactive, when, amongst other things, you'll be able to hear how to make a bedside lamp out of just a piece of wire, one light bulb and a lampshade. How you can make a cheese omelette using only three eggs, a frying pan and a lump of cheddar. And, of course, there'll be the final set of instructions for all of those of you making a Geiger counter out of two milk bottle tops and a toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's all on Today in Parliament, tomorrow night at 2am. Radioactive! And right now we have a dedication here. Yes, and it goes out to all you youngsters in 14 King Street, and it says, Happy Anniversary, one year in your new flat. And it comes from your landlord, and he says that the lease runs out on the 17th, and he'd like you out by the end of the week. <laughs> Well, uh, time now on a lighter note for Radioactive's Quiz of the Air. Last week we had a special competition for all you men entitled Who is the Perfect Lover? And uh, a staggering 80% thought it was Judy Huxtable of Cheshire. <laughs> so that's the correct answer. <laughs> for those of you who didn't get it, her address is 14 Priory Terrace. <laughs> it's time once again to play Radioactive Wordplay Jackpot. Very simple. I give you a letter of the alphabet, and you have to give me, beginning with that letter, a record, a joke, a flower, a colour, a capital city, a river, and a category of neurological disorder. <laughs> so let's start straight away by dialing up Jack of Finchley. Hello, Jack. Hello. Hello there, Jack. It's your lucky day. Your chance to take a spin. See if you win on the Wordplay Jackpot. Who is that? It's Mike Flex and Radioactive. Oh, yeah. Funny you up to play Wordplay Jackpot. Is there anyone you'd like to say hello to? Oh, yeah. That's lucky, because you've got a phone, you can ring them up. <laughs> well, let's get straight in, £20 to be won. Are you nervous, Jack? Uh, a little, yeah. A little nervous. Well, let's just keep our fingers crossed for Jack. Right, well, you know the rules. No. So let's get straight on <laughs> with today's letter. Uh, I don't know the rules, actually. Which is Z, so 15 seconds on the letter Z, starting from now. Uh, hello? I don't know the rules. Hello, are you there? I'm not allowed to help you, Jack. Look, can you tell me what I'm supposed to do? Got five seconds left. 
Hello? Two seconds left. No, is there someone else I could talk One to? One second. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Bad luck, Jack. Well, anyway, very close. We just failed to make it in time. Do you enjoy playing it anyway? No. That's good. Well, that's all we've got time for. <laughs> Onward, play jackpot, which is still to be won after four years and now stands at £850,000. But now it's time for the last half hour of this year's Charity Radiothon. Already things are beginning to hot up as we approach the final target, so let's waste no more time and go over to the studio and join Mike Flex to see how far we've got. Radio actors, Red F-A-D-O, Red F-A-D-O-thon. Thank you, Stephanie. Well, here I am with just 30 minutes to go, and the target this year, remember, is £900,000. Nine hundred thousand pounds. Yes, indeed. And with, uh, with just half an hour left, we've only got a mere 40... F- £892,000 to get. <laughs> and uh, ever-eloquent reporter Nigel Pry is down in the famous Ship's Tavern in Chiswick where he's raising money by being sponsored for every pint he drinks. Nigel. <laughs> Nigel Pry here in the Ship's Tavern in Chiswick where all around as I speak are models, ships, life belts, barmaids, pints of beer, thank you, anchors, life belts, said that, sorry, spilled a bit, and all around me are literally, I'm just finishing the first pint, quite a crowd in the corner, an alabaster sailor. On the second pint over there, low wooden beams, and as I start the second pint, I raise a glass, turn and, ow, hit the low wooden beam. It's marvellous, and back to the studio. Thank you, Nigel, we'll be coming back to him uh, later. Well, of course, the Radiothon is not just an English event, and we'd like to thank the Edinburgh City Fathers for their donation of a pound. <laughs> Don't worry, your change is in the post. <laughs> well, part of the money from today's Radiothon will be going to the Mount Royal Children's Hospital, and Mike Stand is there right now, ready to cheer up the kids. Yes, indeed, Mike. This is Uncle Mike Stand here, spreading a little happiness amongst the kids. <laughs> now, now, here's a lovely little girl. What's, what's your name? Mary. That's a lovely doll you've got there, Mary. Yes. It's from Jane. <laughs> from Jane. And when, when did you get it? This morning. This morning. That's lovely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I took it out of her bed when she went for her operation. <laughs> Great. Well, well I'll, I'll, speak, I'll, I'll speak to you later, Mary. It's a very serious operation. I might get to keep the dolly. <laughs> uh, that's, that's fine, Mary. Well, well here's, here's a little boy, and he's called um, uh, Stephen, and he's rather shy. He's, uh, he's burrowed right down into the bedclothes, but I'm going to go in after him. So. <laughs> <laughs> hello? Hello? Go away. Uh, it's, it's Uncle Mike Stand here from, from Radioactive. Yes, I know. Get out of my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here to have a, a little chat with you and to, to cheer you up, OK? No. No, no come here, Stephen. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen what, what record would you like to hear, eh? I'll call the police. The police? And, um, <laughs> and, and who do you want them for? For you. For oh, me. That, that's really lovely. It's very kind of you, Stephen. I'm, I'm not actually sure if we have the police, but let's go back to the studio to find out how the Radiothon's getting on. Shall Get we? out of I'm, my bed. Radio Actors. Radiothon. Well, throughout the day, our intrepid Mike Hunt is going to be performing a variety of dangerous stunts to raise money for the Radiothon. And to start the day, I've just been told that he's going to jump off a bridge. Well, rather him than me. Anyway, uh, are you there, Mike? Yes, hello, Mike. Yes, hello. It sounds like you're already in position. Yes, I am. It must be very dangerous. Uh, Not really, Mike. I'm sure anyone could do it. Uh, I'm sure you're just being modest, Mike. Uh, How high is it exactly? I can't quite tell, Mike. Roughly? Roughly, well, about three inches. <laughs> three inches? Yes. What sort of a bridge is that? It's not a bridge, Mike, it's a brick. Jumping off a brick. <laughs> well, thank you, Mike. Wouldn't catch me jumping off a bridge, Mike. <laughs> well, we'll be back to him later. Oop. I've done it, Mike. <laughs> OK, this is... Radio we were asking people to ring and pledge money for us to play Cliff Richard's latest record. Uh, unfortunately, no one rang up. That is, until the last moment when someone downstairs in the foyer handed us £100 in cash just to play it. So it's uh, many thanks to Mr Harry Webb, who kindly donated the money. <laughs> right now, we're going to pop down to the ship's tavern to see how Nigel Pry is getting on. 
Nigel ship here in the pry. Nigel pry here in the ship where six pints have gone and the next pint goes smoothly on the floor as I fail to hold it. The crowd <laughs> laughing and also laughing over there, the alabaster sailor. If I can just have a few words with him and as I speak, I'm picking out what must literally be a life belt or another pint or I seem to have lost it. But if I can just turn, I should find a smack in the owl head by the wooden beam again and back to the studio. Radio active. Radio thought. And now Chairman Sir Norman Tonsil is, uh, is just passing the studio now. Good afternoon, Sir Norman, and what are you going to do for the radio thumb? I'm going to have a large brandy and cigar in my office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if you'd like Sir Norman to have a large brandy and cigar in his office, you know the number to ring. 485-6242. Or if you live outside London. O double one o one o o. I'll just repeat that. One o. O double o. One. Oh. But uh, right now Nine. we're... <laughs> Over once again to Mike Hunt, who is about to perform another dangerous stunt. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. And uh, what are you going to do now? Well, I'm about to jump out of a plane without a parachute. That sounds a little risky to me, Mike. Does it? <laughs> well, I'd have thought so. Really? Yes. Oh, well, I'm not doing that then. Uh, thanks for telling me, Mike. Yeah, where's that brick? Welcome back to the Radiothon, and we just heard that the hamburger takeaway store, McDougall's, have pledged to give 2p for every quarter pounder they sell today, and Boots have pledged 3p for every packet of Alka-Seltzer they sell as a result. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over and see how Nigel Pry is getting on. Nigel Alabaster here in the sailor, ten pints adrift without a life belt, and all around me I can see what must be literally two of everybody. A life belt dancing with an alabaster sailor, and if I can just bat in all around me is a silly giggling Nigel Pry who turns, whoo, bangs his head on the wooden beams, cheering crowd, whoo, bangs it again, cheering crowd, loads his trousers bottom out, whoo, applause, and all around him he can see the ceiling as he goes over, whoo, on his body bottom, and he says back to the studio. <laughs> It's a great pleasure to have in the studio Kate Bosch. Kate, welcome to the Radiothon. Thank you, it's amazing. <laughs> Kate, what have you brought? I brought one of my drawings. One of your drawings, marvellous. Thank you. And this is it, uh, is it? Yeah. It's, uh, it's very striking. Is it brush or ink? It's in crayon. <laughs> Great, and it's really uh, a miniature, isn't it? Yeah. Drawn as it is on uh, on this tiny, delicate... Uh, bus ticket. Bus ticket, yes. <laughs> you must have spent a long time on it. Just two stops. And does it have a name? No, I think it's just called the bus. Amazing. Have you brought anything else? Yeah. And what is it? Oh, this leotard. Yes, and what colour is it? Transparent. Is it? I wear it to do the gardening, you know. Nice and comfortable. Yeah, it's a real turn on, too. Good. Well, sometimes I, I have to throw a bucket of water over myself. Do you? Do you? Do, uh, to cool yourself down, eh? No, to make my nipple stand out. Uh, good. <laughs> well, perhaps we'd uh, better hear your latest song, Kate. I, w I wonder if you could tell us what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Oh, amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Only 16. I'm still such a baby. Listen to me sing like a baby too. And if I go over the top, and it becomes great, you can hear me sing like a baby too. Oh, I'm so sorry. 
Thank you, Kate. Well, we've uh, just about come to the end of the uh, Radiothon. What a worthwhile day it's been, Mike. Yes, indeed. Now, last year, if you remember, all the proceeds went to the Help a Starving Pensioner Fund. And with the aid of your money, we collected just over £19,000. And as a result, that pensioner has been able to dine out at the Ritz ever since. <laughs> Broadcasting to you locally, nationwide. It's time for our Soapbox Corner. And as usual, we've invited members of the public to phone in and to put their views across on any subject which they feel particularly grieved about. And today we hear first of all from David McGregor. Hello, David. Aye, well, the thing I feel most strongly about is uh, the polis. What the hell do I think they are, eh? Why don't they leave us alone? Uh, sorry to butt in here, David. Uh, who are we talking about? The Polis. The Polish. No, the Polis. Ah, oh, the Polish people, yeah. No, the Polis, the pigs, you can Uh, pigs. Aye, the bloody animals. I'm sorry, are you saying that pigs are animals or Polish people are animals? <laughs> no, the Poles, it's the pigs, for God's sake. Uh, good, well, that's a fairly controversial viewpoint there. <laughs> uh, for any Polish farmers who are listening. Um, Patrick Linnell, you are our second caller today. What is your particular grievance? I'd like to talk about football hooligans, surely. Uh, Mike, yes. Um, <laughs> what do you think ought to be done about them? I think they ought to be short. Short? Mm. Do you think they should be smaller? No, I think they, they should be short in their legs. Short in the legs, yes. And how would reducing their height solve the problem? No, no, shit them. Well, quite. Uh, <laughs> But how would reducing their height solve the problem? You don't seem to understand me, surely. Uh, Mike, yes. Uh, <laughs> good, well, that's an interesting theory, shortening football fans. Uh, I don't see it myself, but never mind. Um, and lastly, we have Dorothy Kinsman of Berkshire. Dorothy. Thank you. Well, my complaint concerns the problem of pits. Uh, pits. Coal pits? What? No, pits that people take for walks in public places and let them file the pavements. File the pavements? I'm sorry? <laughs> I'm sorry, are we talking about civil servants? <laughs> no, dogs and things making messes all over the Tyne. The Tyne? Is this in Newcastle? What? <laughs> Good, well, that's food for thought. Dorothy, they're suggesting that we should file pits in Newcastle. <laughs> Now, Radio Active presents... Commercial Time. Oh, mummy, Mummy, I've swallowed a 10p piece. Oh, Mummy, Mummy, I've swallowed a hurt myself. Mummy, Mummy. When you're up to your neck in the housework and the kids are getting on your nerves, then this is what you need. Ow! 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 <laughs> Wilson's cricket bat. <laughs> Keeps them quiet. Hello, Harry. Hello, Derek. I like your suit, Harry. Thanks, Derek. It's a lightweight cotton summer suit, only £49 at the Martins of Bond Street sale. I expect they've got hundreds of great menswear bargains at fantastically reduced prices in the Martins of Bond Street sale. They certainly have, but I should hurry the Martins of Bond Street sale in Saturday. Sorry, Harry. Mustache. Where are you going? The Martin of Bond Street sale. <laughs> See you there. But you've already been to the Martins of Bond Street sale, Harry. Right! And now I'm going back to the Martins of Bond Street sale for another great menswear bargain! You better hurry! The Martins of Bond Street sale ends Saturday! I know! I told you the Martins of Bond Street sale ends Saturday! Did you? Yes! I'm so excited by the thought of hundreds of great menswear bargains at fantastically reduced prices at the Martins of Bond Street sale which ends Saturday that I instantly forget what people say to me! <laughs> Get the Martins of Bond Street sale, which ends on Saturday! I won't! The Martins of Bond Street sale, which ends on Saturday! Yes, Saturday! Harry! Yes! Today's Sunday! Bugger! <laughs> this is an SOS message for Michael John Ridley. Michael John Ridley, aged 17 years, was last seen leaving his parents' house in Shellgate Road, Coventry, at 6pm on Saturday. He was carrying a tin of glue, half-sniffed, <laughs> and a brown leather wallet belonging to his father. He's six foot four inches tall, with a shaved head 
and a three-inch knife scar on his right cheek. <laughs> Michael, your parents are terribly worried. Please ring them and reassure them that you're never going back home. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> that was Radioactive's thought for the day. <laughs> Radioactive. This is Radioactive. You're listening to Good Day Sport. Good Day Sport. Today we turn our attention to the ancient art of sword fighting, and we are indeed fortunate to have within our number an adapter, herself a keen swordswoman, who is going to demonstrate some of the rudimentary principles. Thanks very much, Mike. Well, to start the ball rolling, as it were, I'm going to be showing Mike Hunt here one or two tips I picked up in my days at RADA. I didn't know you went to RADA. Now, Mike, if you'd like to begin with your sword in the starting position... When were you at RADA? Now, this point <laughs> under the chin uh, is one of the most vulnerable parts of the body, and these are precisely the points one should aim for in sword fighting, but, of course, avoid in stage fighting. Instead, the points one should aim for are the outside of the arm here... Whoa. Whoops, steady, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> it's OK, Mike. Just relax. It's all quite safe. And here... Ah! on the left arm. Now, uh, obviously, uh, Anna. Uh, one may want to strike the opponent uh, Anna, lower down. You've, uh, you've just, uh... But again, one should aim for the outside of the body in the region of the upper thighs, thus... Oh, caught my fingers. Now, generally speaking... Uh, can you stop for a The most sensitive areas of uh, the body Anna. are the facial and groin oh, areas. God. So... <laughs> So any strokes, such as the upper swing between the legs, thus, ah! <laughs> or the downward thrust, thus, ah! should be avoided. Oh. <laughs> That's oh. right, Mike, and jolly good. Oh. Now, Mike has remembered that a crucial oh. part of all this is the reaction of one's opponent, oh, and some dear. very realistic acting going on there from Mike. Excellent. Oh, you cut my bloody <laughs> ear off. <laughs> Back to the studio. Radio actors... Results Service. Yes, indeed, we've come to the big moment of the results service, and we start with Aston Villa versus Manchester City. Aston Villa 5, Manchester City 3. Villa winning by five goals to three then, but how well they realise now that had they scored two goals fewer this afternoon, they would have drawn this match. That's the harsh reality of football these days, where five minus two makes three, and three each means a draw. But let's not take it away from Villa. They got five goals in the back of the net, and that's good enough for a win when the other side only get three. City had two chances to score late on, which would have meant a five-all draw, and yet they could have missed the three they did get, which would have meant losing by an even greater margin, namely 5-0. But as it was, they didn't, and the scoreline remains Aston Villa 5, Manchester City 3. Thanks very much, and for our next report uh, on the match between Manchester United and Spurs, we go over to White Hart Lane. Well, a very dull afternoon here at White Hart Lane. One consolation, there's been no crowd trouble, but the sad news is that there's been no crowd. <laughs> uh, yes, the Man United Spurs match being played this afternoon at Old Trafford, Manchester. So from White Hart Lane, Tottenham, <laughs> it's back to the studio. <laughs> And finally, we go over to Notts Forest versus Liverpool. Well, throughout this match, Sunes in midfield for Liverpool has been like a rock, solid and determined, while Dalglish has been an absolute tiger up front. Powerful, graceful, but always ready to strike unexpectedly. In the Forest defence, McGovern has been a tower of strength, tall, firm as granite, resisting every attack, while Shilton, stretching for everything, has been like a piece of elastic. Up front, Robertson has run like a terrier, four slightly stumpy legs and a little wet nose. <laughs> Rush. Rush was for me a large green insect, while Thompson was a giant carrot in a top hat. I was on my feet shouting in the 53rd minute when the pitch turned into a tidal wave and washed away the east stand, but the match really ended for me ten minutes from time when I was taken out of the stadium by two men in white coats. This is Dermot McElveney for Radioactive at Stanley Mental Hospital. <laughs> Well, the very moderate success of the record This Time We're Going to Make It by the England World Cup squad 
was matched only by the very moderate success of the team itself in Spain. But never ones to be downhearted, the team have come back with their follow-up single, optimistically entitled, Next Time. Next time around, next time around, next time around we'll get it right. Next time around we'll win the fight. Next time around we'll win the World Cup, or at least we might. Welcome back. And a quick apology now from our traffic department for an incorrect announcement made during the last show uh, due to a slight typing error. Uh, the message should have read that due to industrial action there'll be no buses running tomorrow morning in the city centre uh, and not as was announced uh, due to industrial action there'll be no busy ranging to Maxchief in Ducati Sintrad. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> suffer from the oldest social problem in the world, then you'll know what it's like to have bad breath. But now your problem days are over with new Quilly's lozenges. Teenager Judy Stench tells how they changed her life. Well, I never used to have much of a social life. All the boys would ignore me. And at parties, sometimes I'd just feel unwanted. What a marvellous evening. I could stay here all night. Absolutely did Hello, everyone. everyone. Oh. <laughs> Then one day a close friend told me what the problem was. You've got bad breath, love! <laughs> well, eventually, in desperation, I went to the chemist to ask his advice. Morning, Mr Turner. Oh, Judy, nice to see you. Hang on a minute. Uh, yes, now what can I do for you? I told him what the problem was, and he suggested I try new quillies immediately. I suggest you try new quillies immediately. <laughs> Here, have a free packet or two, or half a dozen, maybe. Fact, have the whole bloody lot. <laughs> well, needless to say, Quilly's changed everything. Now I have a different date every night. Yes, why don't you take Judy's advice? If you feel down in the mouth, suck Quilly's, suck Quilly's, they make your mouth feel great. But before you go out in the morning, stick Quilly's in your pocket. Great. Out now on CBS Records, Bob Dylan's tribute to Bucks Fizz. <laughs> Bob Dylan, whose own records have been selling very badly indeed, recently pays tribute to a group who have been doing noticeably better. Run for the sun, little one, you're an outlaw once again. In the land of From the man who brought you classic hits of the 60s, such as Blowing in the Wind and Like a Rolling Stone, now comes a collection of classics of the 80s. Well, I know it sounds funny, but I don't want to be in love. Just one 
Hey, pizza. Yeah, yeah. A hit package, including the land of make-believe. One of those nights, making your mind up, dancing queen. Oh, no, sorry, that's Abba. One of us. Oh, no, sorry, that's Abba. Save your kisses for me. Oh, no, sorry, that's the brotherhood of man. Anyway, a lot of great songs from the man who changed the face of the 60s, a tribute to the new faces of the 80s, and also on the same great LP, Leonard Cohen sings Tight Fit. <laughs> It's several minutes past exactly here on Radioactive, which means that it's time, as usual, for this week's look at what's happening locally across the nation. What's going on? 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 Going. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I said, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Right now, here's our resident theatre critic, Sebastian Wally, who's here with this week's <laughs> who's here with this week's appraisal of one of the plays currently running locally. Sebastian, how was the play you saw tonight? Mm, ebullient. Sorry. Ebullient, really, and quite, quite incandescent. Good. You enjoyed it. Oh yes, quite decadent, quite recherche. How was the uh, how was the acting? Purist, fundamentally, but altogether more subliminally forthright than one expected. Mm-hmm. Yes, and the staging? Mm, Kantian, really, really quite breathtakingly despotic. Good. Well, many thanks, Sebastian. And if you'd like tickets to see that show, that Sooty's Magic Wonder Show, <laughs> they're available from the box office. We go over live now to the Theatre Royal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second evening of the Royal Shakespeare Company's production of David Copperfield. Uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, the part of Mr. Micawber will tonight be taken by Christopher Lillycrap and not, <laughs> as stated in the programme, by Sir Ralph Richardson. <laughs> the part of young Copperfield, which was to have been played by Christopher Lillycrap, uh, will now be taken by Thomas Harpy. And the part of Mr. Dick also to be played by Christopher Lillicrat, uh, will be played by Harold Larson. Uh, the part of the young lunatic in the programme to be played by Harold Larson uh, will be taken by Tamara Spriggs, <laughs> whose roles as Frida, Agnes, second young lunatic, Miss Picknose, first nun, daft prostitute, and back end of pantomime cow uh, will be taken by Jim Burke. Uh, Mr. Burke's part as dead man on battlefield uh, will be taken by the late George Highbury, <laughs> whose unexpected demise has caused tonight's changes. <laughs> we are, however, pleased to announce that George Friend is much better than expected, so the part of second dead man on battlefield, <laughs> which was to have been played by the late George Friend, <laughs> will now be played by a couple of cushions and a bag of potatoes. <laughs> Mr. Highbury's performance in the role of Monsieur Puttycock will be played by Carl Froggett, who is down in the programme to play the role of Tiny Toby. The role of Tiny Toby will be played by Spot. The role of Rover, which was to have been played by Scott, will be played instead by Shep. <laughs> Shep's original role as rabid dog in company of second daft prostitute <laughs> will tonight be omitted from the performance <laughs> and replaced by the pre-recorded sound of a dog barking. <laughs> the part of small Jewish man by the roadside on the approach to Broadstairs <laughs> will be played by a small Jewish man we found by the roadside on the approach to Broadstairs <laughs> when we were last there. The guitar will be played by Eric Clapton. Radioactive. Well, there can be very few artists who have stayed the course from the 60s to the present day. Cliff Richard, The Who, The Stones, perhaps. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. Genesis. Pink Floyd, The Beach Boys. Well, quite a few, in fact. And uh, <laughs> among them are the popular American duo, recently reformed, Hyman and Carbuncle. I met my old partner on Fifth Avenue. 
And when I asked him how he was, he said the pits He'd been reduced to selling on street corners The 49th edition of our greatest hits <laughs> So we ate ourselves to bagels, chewed over our careers But things hadn't changed, no We're still lazy is an indisputable fact but nothing at all to do with this song <laughs> Our lawyers held a meeting out on Brooklyn Bridge and they agreed that we could go back out on tour and though the shows themselves were only average the songs we premiered were frankly poor Still we made ourselves a million And we paid off our arrears We haven't changed, no We're still greedy after all these years <laughs> There must be 50 ways to make a million And we know every goddamn one Welcome back subject of celebrations and festivities, a reminder that next Tuesday, Radioactive will be six years old. Happy, happy, happy birthday, happy, happy, happy birthday, happy, happy, happy birthday, happy birthday to us. <laughs> and to celebrate that fact throughout the day on Tuesday, each and every one of the Radioactive disc jockeys will be out and about getting very pissed. <laughs> so, there'll be no programmes broadcast until Wednesday morning. OK, now on Radioactive, it's time for our weekly Playhouse presentation. This week, an extract from Return to Slovenly Manor, an Edwardian drawing room drama, in which Sir John Pynn plays Gerald, Sir Gerald Pynn plays John, and Radioactive Studio 4 plays the drawing room. Gerald, come hither, my son. I wish to speak with you. What is it, Father? It concerns your Aunt Alice, son. I didn't know I had an Aunt Alice and father. Your Aunt Alice, boy. Oh, how is Aunt Alice, father? Aunt Alice's father is dead. He died several years ago. <laughs> I thought you knew that. Yes, father, but how is Aunt Alice? The news is that she is not so well. Not so well as her father? <laughs> no, boy, she is in better health than her father. Oh, joy, what gladsome news. No, boy, the news is... The news is not so gladsome, for she is not so well. Ah, not so well. Indeed. Uh, then what ails her father? Her father is dead. I have just said this. <laughs> no, no, what ails Aunt Alice's father? It is said she has an illness. How so? How so? <laughs> How so this illness? How so this illness? What are you talking about? <laughs> this, this illness, what is it? Why, it is when the body suffers from a disease of some sort. Men, <laughs> men call it illness. But what is this illness that ails Aunt Alice's father? The illness that ails Aunt Alice's father is death, as I have already said. <laughs> and Aunt Alice? The illness which Aunt Alice has is unknown. Ah, uh, then I must leave you, father. But what about Aunt Gladys? What? <laughs> Your Aunt Gladys, too, is ill. And what is the matter with Aunt Gladys, father? Nothing. He's very well. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Fair whizzing by here on Radioactive. <laughs> so without further ado, let's welcome our two contestants for this week's Master Quiz. <laughs> A 
And they are Dr. John Milestone, a lecturer in Hegelian, uh, Hegelian, is Hegelian. It? Hegelian philosophy at Glasgow Polytechnic, <laughs> and Mr. Douglas Thanet, headmaster of Marlborough Public School and expert ornithologist. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you Thank very you. much. And the first question goes to you, Doctor, and your choice of categories are history or modern music. Uh, history, please. Wise choice, I think. In what year <laughs> did Kate Bush release her first single? <laughs> Who? Kate Bush. Her first single. I'll have to hurry you. No idea. No. 1978 was the answer. Surprised you didn't get that one. Very big hit for her. Mr. Thanet, <laughs> your categories are geography or modern music? Uh, geography. Very well. What famous European city, well known for its manufacture and export of jute and chemical fertilizer, occurs mm -hmm. in the title of an early Beatles album? <laughs> what? Early Beatles album. European city? Uh, Paris? No, very close. It was, in fact, Hamburg. Live at Hamburg. You were doubtless confusing it with Supertramp. Live in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, back to you. Astrophysics or modern music? Um, astrophysics? The new Soviet DN-51 fighter aircraft is able to fly at over 1,800 miles per hour due oh. to a new form of propulsion. Yeah. Who was the last British pop singer to tour Russia? <laughs> <laughs> The last British singer to tour the Soviet Union? No. Well, it was, of course, Elton John. <laughs> Never mind. No points to you. Well, the score is currently level, so it's neck and neck still anyone's game. And, of course, time for the tiebreaker question. First one to answer correctly gets it, and the category chosen randomly by our computer is modern music. <laughs> Which celebrated British pop group did the late Keith Moon play for? Who? Is the right answer. <laughs> be the same after you've seen the basement <laughs> where nightmares in the basement begins the most terrifying motion picture experience of all time you'll never be the same after you've seen the basement the motion picture guaranteed to make your voice go deeper it's true I saw the basement, and my voice is deeper than it's ever been before. The basement did it to me. The basement will do it to you. It's true. I saw the basement with him. And my voice is deeper than it's ever been before. I don't mind, but I'm his mother. Hello, Mary. Hello, June. How's little Trevor? Well, quite a handful. I'm forever changing his nappies. Oh, why is that, Mary? Because they keep getting wet, June. Oh, why is that? Because little Trevor keeps piddling in them, June. <laughs> oh, yes. And my hands keep getting wet, too. Well, you need new nappy blot. New nappy blot? Yes. Unlike ordinary nappies, new nappy blot doesn't let the wetness through because it's super absorbent, so it keeps your hands nice and dry and means less work. Nappy Blot keeps the wetness in and keeps your hands dry. Hello, Mary. Oh, hello, June. Did you try new Nappy Blot? Oh, yes, I did, Mary. They really are super absorbent. Now my hands seem nice and dry and I haven't had to change little Trevor's nappy for a month. <laughs> There's only one thing, June. What, Mary? He's getting a little heavy to lift up. <laughs> oh, 
Over the years, Radioactive has done its bit for underprivileged kids by organising adventure holidays. Many of you, I'm sure, heard about last year's recreation of the Voyage of Magellan, when we got 50 children out of foster homes, took their clothes away, dressed them up as 16th century Portuguese sailors, and sent them off on their own round the world. <laughs> Great fun. Well, our intrepid Mike Hunt arranged this year's adventure holiday and Mike Flex talked to him earlier this week. Mike, I gather this year's holiday is pretty exciting. Uh, yes, Mike, uh, this year we've given 25 deprived East End kids the opportunity to recreate the journey of a famous explorer. Marvellous. And uh, we've called it Operation Scott. <laughs> After... After uh, Captain Scott, the Antarctic explorer, whose journey they are uh, recreating. Uh -huh. And they're following it pretty faithfully, are they, Mike? Uh, yes, Mike, following it faithfully right through to the end. And it uh, <laughs> really is a marvellous break for these deprived kids, uh, many of whom didn't even have a pair of shoes to their name when we left. Hmm. And they're on their way now, are they? Uh, yes, Mike, and it really was a very impressive sight, I can tell you. 25 barefooted East End kids setting out <laughs> across the Antarctic waste. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, what did they take with them? Well, several of them were carrying buckets and spades. <laughs> buckets and spades? Uh, yes, well, we kept our exact destination a secret, you see. And, uh, I think a few of them thought we were going to Margate. <laughs> did, did they have anything else with them? Uh, tents, sledges? Uh, yes, they each had a packet of sandwiches, uh, provided free by the station, incidentally. Smashing. And uh, all of them were wearing radioactive T-shirts. <laughs> And they were free as well, were they, Mike? Absolutely free, yes. And, uh, you know, it's the first time many of these kids have been abroad, and for some, who knows, it may well turn out to be the last. <laughs> <laughs> what an emotional farewell it was. I remember one kid just wouldn't let go of my overcoat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I expect he wanted to wear it, Mike. Yes, well, I dare say he did. <laughs> well, Mike, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I have just heard that this is, in fact, going to be the last radioactive adventure holiday. Oh, dear. Any idea why, Mike? Uh, something to do with the International Court of Human Rights, I believe, Mike. <laughs> Finally, a look at one of the happier stories of the day. Win Wan, the female panda, arrived all the way from China to be mated with our very own Wang Wang. <laughs> the two were introduced as crowds of laughing schoolchildren applauded. As Wang Wang broke out of the cage and killed ten of them before being destroyed. <laughs> so that's it from us. Join us next week at the slightly later time of four o'clock in the morning. This is a product of BBC Records and as such should have reached you in perfect condition. If, however, you have found any fault with this album, please do not hesitate to write to this address for your refund. Fulham Place, London, W1. Write to this address for your refund. Fulham Place, London, W1A. Done 1A.